Hello, hello everyone. Rams the Raptor Snake Shanso is back with you guys, and it's Friday. Friday is the day when I'm doing my boot camps. Everyone free to watch, of course. So it's Friday, <laughs> right? And today I've chosen quite an interesting topic, which I've never covered before, at least in my English online master classes. It is the calculation technique. And uh, earlier this week, I already talked about this topic in the Latvian masterclass, and thus was this idea expressed by one of the members in the chat that why don't you do this in the English? So sure, that's why we are here today. And that's my intention in the next two, two and a half hours to explain you the uh, most important, most important uh, concepts and aspects, how you can get better at calculation. Uh, right, so probably I'll do it like this. I'll start with some simple examples, so otherwise it's gonna be blah 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 blah. I'll talk about quite a lot of theory and you won't see anything uh, real. So I'll start with an example and slowly but gradually I'll try to explain to you the most important points which I want to address tonight. Right, alrighty, just let me find one. Um, just a sec. And just a second, let's start with something simple. All righty, let's take this example. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. That's not the move. And here. So this position, uh, this is the position where we have to uh, decide from Black's perspective, can Black play G5? So why G5? Uh, because uh, white is aiming uh, for quite a serious positional pull to play knight e2, knight e4, perhaps continue with g4, g5. The knight on h6 is misplaced and feels really disconnected. So g5 is really an attempt to destroy uh, white's uh, strong center of the pawns. However, by playing g5, black seriously weakens his king. So then there might be some potential ideas as queen d3, play queen h7, some checkmate the ideas, etc. So, what we are gonna do now? First, I think it's quite important to understand um, some theory. And theory is when you are going for such um, very direct continuations, first you need to make sure that you are see seeing all of the forced moves. So what is a forced move? A uh, forced move is anything that includes captures. For example, if I play g5, it's probably take. A uh, forced move is a direct attack or a threat. So you need to take uh, care of uh, various uh, threats. And what was else? Wait a second, I already forgot. <laughs> um, where was this? Where was this? Where was this? I had very, very nicely, yeah, or or in, in, intermezzo so-called sufficient hooks, right. So these are the moves that I need to make um, sure myself first. And I've seen many times uh, that uh, some players say, okay, this is just dangerous, but uh, very often you cannot really make all of your decisions based on it's risky. Right, it's dangerous. I cannot do this. So, for example, g5. Okay, it's dangerous. There's some queen d3. There's some checks. I cannot do this. This is dangerous. Sometimes, and actually quite a lot of times, you have to calculate. So let's let's try this. So after g5, what we want to make sure that again all of the forced moves they are not really working. So for example, something like f takes, bishop takes on g5. Let's check. Is there anything? Uh, probably not. I mean, some direct attacks, there's nothing. So per perhaps um, f takes on g5 is not that we should be concerned about. So let's check g5 f5. Again, no big deal. We just take on e5. There is no rook e1, no nothing, because that's a rook under attack. There's no pin. We check it. All right. So what else is there? Then we are checking all of the other forced moves, which are threats. So what are the threats here? So obviously it's queen d3, which we are gonna deal with very shortly. 
And obviously it's some kind of attacking move, for example, something like knight h5. So something like g5, knight h5, threatening to get to g7. I take on f4, and white cannot easily get to the g7 square. For example, there's no queen g3 or queen g4, and queen f4, we happily are playing bishop c5 check, queen e5, and the pawn on f7 is protected by the knight on h6. Okay, so we already understand what is going to happen in most of the uh, occasions. So, queen d3. So after queen d3, it becomes apparent that queen h7 is a threat, although it's not a mate. Because after queen d3, let's say g takes, queen h7 check, king f8, queen h8, there's knight g8. Also, we pay attention that there is such a possibility to give a check on c5, free the e7 square for the king, and it, it, it simply escapes the attack. Thus, this is the correct solution. So g5 is absolutely the best move. Queen d3, bishop c5 check. King h2 makes no sense to position the king under the uh, same diagonal as the black queen. So king h1, g takes, queen h7 check, king f8, knight f5 makes no sense because we just trade it and play queen e5. So knight h5, queen e5, knight f4, and king e7. And here black is successfully defending the position. So after the knight d3, threatening rook e1, queen c3, no checks, is just king d8, knight c5 takes, again no check, is just, just king d8, and after queen g7, queen e3, we protect against the check, we protect the knight, and we are safeguarding the king from a potential attack. So was this difficult? Um... I don't think so. I don't think so. Because when we are returning back to the position, one of the most important uh, points in order to uh, succeed better at calculation is uh, try to imagine yourself in your head the so-called tree of variations. So what is a tree of variations? So that you are not missing anything. For example, um, when I'm playing g5, of course, I'm expecting the most annoying continuations from my opponent. So a typical mistake from a beginner would be choosing something which I like the most. Uh, I mean, I like the most. And I'm just going to stick, it. for example, something like g5. A typical mistake of a, um, um, not really such a good player is g5, f takes, bishop g5. This is a great line, right? But he is not paying attention to all of the possibilities in White's arsenal. So if I play something like g5, first I pay attention to what is changing in my position. Uh, it's a great idea to ask yourself what I would be doing if I was playing from my opponent's side. So naturally, if you think about that, queen d3 quickly uh, jumps in your, in your head. And you try to identify the so-called candidate moves. Right, what is a candidate move? A candidate move is something that you are going to pay attention to. For example, here after g5, the potential candidate moves from your opponent is f takes on g5. Why f takes on g5? Because I believe in your calculations, always start with the obvious move first. So if you play something like g5 and um, bring a piece or a pawn under attack and offer a trade, always try to calculate that first. You know, I've seen this many times. Um, even some good players are doing like this. They're going for some complications. They're calculating everything <laughs> except the basic line. For example, I play g5. I've calculated queen d3, bishop c5, king f8, king e7, the king escapes. But the basic question, what happens really to f takes on g5, sometimes it just skips the attention. So I think that's just bad practice. So first, try to calculate the obvious continuation and then only 
proceed to something else. And of course, the rule is this. As soon as you are seeing something which doesn't work for you, you stop calculating. You are not seeking five or six ways to prove that you are wrong. It's just enough with the one. So what is the tree of calculation? So after G5, this is one branch. F5 is the second branch. Queen D3 is the third branch. We might be thinking also, maybe there's some kind of an intermezzo move. What is intermezzo? So-called swishing. So another kind of attack. So a move which we include in between. So, for example, some something like a check. Is there a check? No. Bishop h7 check, it's nothing. I mean, some other counterattack at the king, uh, queen side, maybe it would change something. We're checking it. No, there's nothing. So, apparently, after g5, f takes bishop g5. Now, let's pay a close attention to, to this position. Do Are we seeing any direct threats? I am not seeing. So I'm just stopping this position after g5, f takes bishop g5. And very important for calculations is draw the line. When you are feeling confident that you are, calculate, that you are satisfied, satisfied with the position, you are drawing the line and say, this is better, or this is equal, or this is interesting. Um, never stop like... I don't know what is going in, uh, going on there, so I'll just stop there and see what's happening in other lines. Always try to calculate a line until the moment when you are feeling you can give an evaluation. So, for example, a big mistake here would be to do this. For you, let's say you play g5, f takes, and you're thinking, what is going to happen after bishop takes on g5? And now you start to fantasize something like, I don't know, rook e1. And then you think, I'm going to play g6. And then you think, he's going to play rook e2. I'm going to play king g7. This is already, by the way, a big mistake. Because you don't know if your opponent is going to choose exactly those moves. You don't know if he's going to play rook e1. You don't know if he's going to play rook e2. And you're just wasting your time on calculating stuff which is not important. What is important? First, you check. Is there any forcing move? Is there? So we're checking. Is there an attack? Is there some check? Is there some threat? Okay, I mean, there is a threat. Queen d3. But we easily play g6. That's it. Yeah, there is threat. Queen d3, g6. So the pawn is under attack. So if white is obliged to play rook e1, this is where our line stops. Now you're saying, I should be better, because this is a weakness. I can place either bishop f4 right away, or perhaps I can, I don't know, maybe something, some, some quiet move of king g7, maybe even position bishop e7, bishop f8, bishop g7. It's simply better. Draw the line. You don't care about this line anymore. It's not dangerous for you. Now, when we are calculating this, we are thinking about other moves. So I'm thinking... After knight f5, g takes, queen takes, check, here, queen e5. Do I need to calculate any further? No, I don't. I see. It's simply extra pawn. I protected f7 square. g7 is protected. I'm doing great. I don't need to sit here for another 20 minutes, try to calculate it 10 moves forward. That's it. I draw the line. The most important part, of course, is queen d3. So after queen d3, it's obvious that there is a checkmate threat or at least some big, big attack incoming. I'm already discarding, mostly based on intuition, that g6 is risky business because of a 5, because that's a threat. Let's say, I mean, I can give a check first, king h1. I cannot allow f takes on g6 purely based on my understanding, queen e5, f takes, that this is going to be a dangerous attack, the king is exposed. So I can calculate take, 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 and take. And I think a good player will stop right here. There is no purpose to calculate this further. I evaluate the position, and I'm saying the king is exposed. So my opponent has the opposite color bishop. 
which in attack is an extra piece. There is no need. Try to call Cladis 10 moves forward. I see there is a strong attack. I am not getting to the pawn on e5. This line doesn't work for me. I am evaluating the position. It's a bad line. So in the calculation, I'm thinking that probably then bishop c5 will be necessary. Rook f2 is ridiculous. King h2 makes no sense to position the queen. I already explained this. And after king h1, g takes. I can calculate again in the head. Rook f4, queen e5, check here, check here. It's nothing. Not dangerous. So most likely he'll either play knight h5 or queen h7. After knight h5 takes, he has to give a check. Otherwise knight f4 is just a 5. So he gives a check here. This check makes no sense because the queen is under attack by the rook. And we are happy to trade queens, keeping the extra pawn on the 4. So knight f4 is a forced move. And king e7 is a forced move because of knight g6 check. So all we need to do from afar, calculating this line, is seeing that there is no attack with the rook. And after knight e3, cold-blooded queen takes on c3, keeps the position um, intact. Will black survive uh, with knight g8? I don't like knight g8. You mean here? Uh, check. I mean, he doesn't play. He I mean, here? Knight g8. This I'm not so sure. Maybe this is also playable. Maybe something like earlier. Here, here. Check. Um, knight g8. It is possible. But it looks risky. Now, this is looking risky from afar. Although, of course, the computer immediately says this is a great position. But again, we are checking if there are no direct threats. And... This is the biggest mistake of many people um, who are spending so much time on the so-called non-forcing moves. So I think when you're choosing between the game plan and the strategy, it probably pays off to sit, uh, sit something like twice or three times per game because those are the crucial moments in the game and you have to decide in which direction the, the game is going to proceed. Uh, I don't think it really makes sense to sit in the opening phase in some positional struggle where you have to choose a plan for something like 40 minutes, right? Leave this time. I mean, this is entirely different topic. This is time management, but leave this time for calculation. And when there are non-forcing moves, you don't want to spend too much time. Right. Okay. Let me show you another example and I'll explain you some other concepts for example are there some harder examples there are some easier examples okay let's start with this one okay let's start with this one so h6 black just played h6 yeah you would burn your time one one dex yeah yeah i see that of course uh but you really, really have to choose where you are spending your time because I believe uh, you have to you have to spend your time on the moments which matter. Because let's say you're you're sitting in the opening and spending something like one hour on some <laughs> positional nuances which don't matter. I make a position the night here or here. I mean, is this really such a big impact to the game? Do you think so? No. I think it's very important to spend the time on the critical moments. So leave the time for the later stages. Right. So here, black just played h6. Of course, it's either knight of 7 or knight e6. So how do we spot that? How do we spot that immediately? And um, it's not a secret that uh, calculation goes hand in hand together with your tactical vision. And you cannot really do one thing without the other. Um, uh, during this um, boot camp, of course, I'm going to show you how you can become better at tactics, how you can train that, how you can train to recognize parents. And uh, for example, here I see it's immediately night of seven. You might ask me, how do I know that? It's very simple. 
it's pattern recognition. I just recognize this pattern. I don't recognize this particular game. I mean, I just, I'm just playing it for the first time. I recognize the pattern. There's something with knight f7, something with queen g6, rook h3, something I've seen it before. And you might be asking, where? I don't know. I don't know. I've seen it somewhere. It's in the subconscious knowledge. And it really, uh, it really uh, pays off to study as many um, uh, tricks and uh, tactical ideas as you can because it stays at your subconscious level and you never know when you're going to need it. If you have never studied some tricks or ideas or patterns, it's going to be insanely difficult for you to come up if, if you are unfib unfamiliar with the idea. Right. So again, the forced move is knight takes on f7. And based on calculation rules, what do you know? What 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 do we know? So we are checking the forced moves from the opponent. Of course, it's king f7. That's the first move. We are not gonna calculate queen c7 as the second move because we first need to make sure that the most obvious move is working for us. So we are gonna make sure of king f7. But wait, let let's not stop that because we are taught to think about the forcing moves. So again, let us remind, let me remind you, what are the forcing moves? Those are peace captures, those are checks, and those are threats. So except of king takes on f7, what other moves there are? Of course, not g takes, that's ridiculous. I just take the queen. Bishop e5 is ridiculous. Rook c3 changes nothing. Let's ask ourselves, is there a check? Now we're looking at the position. No check. Yeah, but actually this, this question might be super, super important in some other situations. Save the queen. Yeah, if you save the queen, something like queen e7, I just take it here. That's it. I'm stopping the line. Yeah, of course, of course. But uh, Kane, you're absolutely right. But I think it's quite important to teach you to think like this. You're always asking yourself, is there more than one continuation for my opponent? It's a very big mistake to choose just one continuation. And like I mentioned, it's the most common mistake. I'm choosing the continuation which I like the most. So one of the typical mistakes, for example, let's say I'm calculating this branch operations and I'm calculating like this. I go here, he goes here. I go here, he goes here. I sacrifice, he takes. I make a big attack. So where was the mistake? So the mistake was already at this fourth or fifth level, fourth or fifth move, he takes. Who says he has to take? Right? And this is one of those most common mistakes. I sacrifice, he takes, I have this beautiful checkmate. And he doesn't take. So again, we are going to talk about those uh, branches of orations quite a bit today. So let's check again. King takes on f7, queen takes g6. We are not concerned about king e7. King of fate, rook h3 was our idea. Ah, right. One, one thing I would like to uh, advise to you. I don't know if this is a recommended strategy by uh, very strong coaches. Probably it is because it makes so much sense. It's one of my favorite approaches. I call it the minimal variation. Minimal program. What is that? What is the minimal program? When I'm calculating a deeper line, uh, I am not sure that I am perfectly calculating this to my head. For example, after all of this sacrifice, I'm seeing all of this sacrifice. Of course, I'm seeing rook h3. But the so-called minimal program for me is I can at least take queen e6. So I think, okay, I've sacrificed the piece. I've got three pawns, uh, they're connected, it should be great, the king is exposed, the queen is on the board. So I think if nothing better is going to be at this stage, I'm going to choose this one. Because I need a continuation after queen g7, king f8. It's absolutely wrong to think like that. Okay, I'm just going to play queen g6 and then, then I'm going to find it out. Wrong. That's wrong. It doesn't work like that. There might be not a continuation. 
So you need at least something, at least some idea. So it's either a perpetual, maybe there is a force perpetual. So I'm going for this continuation. I'm seeing there is at least a draw. And when I'll get to this position, I'll calculate for more. So this is the so-called minimal program. I mean, in this example, this is ridiculous, right? Because this is a forced line. But there might be other games. I'm going to show you them when there is a branch, when there's a branch. And you cannot afford to calculate every single branch to a greater depth because every three candidate moves from your opponent, you are thinking about their best response. After your response, there's three moves from your opponent. You have to take care of all of them. You're calculating your best response. After your best response, there's three moves from your opponent, right? And the deeper you're calculating, the greater chance there's going to be a mistake. You're going to miss something. So what I would like to, uh, hi Togger, what I would like to suggest you, remember, always pay attention first to the so-called forced moves. That's one. Try to give a evaluation of the position as quickly as possible. Uh, to st stop the line, to close the line. Third, remember to have the so-called minimal program. So here my minimal program is, I'm thinking there is at least queen is six. If I'll get to this position, and we'll get to this position because this is just an obvious and very forced line, but there might be a more complex game. And I'm thinking, if I am get to this position, he is going to play... He's going to play exactly this is what happened in the game. I can at least play queen e6, but once I'll get to this position, I'll think of more. And there you go. You got to this position. And I'm thinking, wait, right. So my minimal program was queen e6, but now I can think for more. So I'm thinking, wait a second, rook h3 actually looks great. So I'm thinking, okay, rook h3, haircut. What is haircut? Who? Me? No, that's old haircut, Sicilian player. <laughs> Something like one week already. So rook h3, the threat is to play rook f3 check, knight e7. And here, again, based on our uh, tactical vision, the correct continuation is rook f3 check. Knight f5, queen e6, we are not even bothered because we just win the piece with a very strong attack. King g8 is forced. Okay, Togger, great to hear that. <laughs> Queen e6 check. King h7. And rook f7. And if you are quite well in tactics, you're going to spot. You're threatening two threats. Either Queen h6 or Queen e7. And black is powerless. I know Vishwanathan Anand, of course, but not in person. Not in person, unfortunately. So here black just has to resign. And again, before we are going to this position, we are checking all of the forced continuations from our opponent. So queen h6 is the obvious threat. How do you stop that? Maybe there is a check. I'm checking no checks. Maybe there is a peace trade. I'm checking no peace trades. Maybe there is a threat. I'm checking all of the threats. So rook c6. Queen e7, I'm stopping the calculation. That's it. I'm putting the line here. I'm saying I have three pawns, the strong attack. So if black simply trades, I'm stopping the calculation. I'm winning. I don't need to calculate this further. So this is a good practice of calculation. Why didn't I take the pawn with queen? You mean here? Um, I could have. But then king e8 is not so clear. King e8, rook f3, rook f8, it's not so clear. I mean, probably is good. Probably still winning because I'm enjoying three pawns for the sacrifice piece. And uh, quite a strong attack. But this was a forced line. So all of this is forced. Of course, h6 is a big blunder. Takes, 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 takes. Uh, king f8, rook h3, threatening, rook f3 check. So there's no other move. So rook f3 is king e7, queen g7 is deciding. So you have to go knight e7. 
here. You have to go king g8. You have to go here and rook f7. Actually, in terms of calculation, this is easy line. Yes, because there is no branch. The, the branch is like this. I mean, the tree is like this, right? I mean, there is no branch, no nothing. You don't need to calculate three moves for all of your... Um, uh, all of your moves because the, those branches are so ridiculous that you don't need to pay attention to it. Uh, this is my game. My game. A rapid game. Some rapid game. Doesn't matter. No, I won't play with viewers today. Uh, probably not. I don't know. Maybe maybe after. Okay, let me show you something else. Um, Alright, now this is a lovely example. Now, this is going to be quite hard. But I like hard examples. <laughs> All right. This is again my game. <laughs> yeah. So this is my game. I played this in Bundesliga against Hungarian international master. I think he's an international master. Korpa Bence. Bence, how, how does it spell it? I don't know. And um, here I'm thinking, what is the difference? So I want to play... Queen d8 or queen c8, and after either rook d1 or rook c1, hide the queen, bring the rook out, equalize the position, and enjoy my cup of coffee. Right. So I'm thinking here, so there's probably no difference. I managed to equalize the game, everything is great. I play queen c8, and after rook c1, I start to think. I start to think. Because suddenly it it's becoming apparent that <laughs> thank you, it becomes apparent that it's not so simple. Can you please recognize what is not so simple after Queen A A? And we already know the concept of the forced moves. We are checking the forced moves from our opponent. The forced moves are again checks threats and what was the third one yeah peace traders yeah okay there's no peace trades there's no checks but there are threats so what do you think again to be able to calculate this accurately you need to see some tactical motives Well, so of course it becomes quite apparent. I don't know what he said, he's gone, don't worry about this. So, rook c7 is the obvious move. And the question is, what happens after bishop d6? And now, yeah, of course, rook c7 and bishop d6 is the obvious move. Another question. What happens after, if you're trained in spotting tactical ideas, knight d7? Why is this? Because, again, you have to spot your queen and bishop is completely out of the game. And your king is... Yep. Your king is left alone. So rook c7 makes sense, targeting the bishop... Bishop d6, we're checking all of the forced moves. Knight d7, and here comes the idea. Now we try to calculate. Takes, check. This obviously is a bad idea. Right, it's a mate. King h8, queen h5. Again, this is going to be a mate. So what happens? We have to play h6 and there is many many moves for white there is a move knight d7 threatening with mate threatening with take there is also knight e8 threatening with all of the same threats there is also knight d5 so what do you think is a good player going to calculate this <laughs> yeah, talk it. 
a good player won't cock like this. So this is a bad line. So you already see from afar more than one very strong condition. For example, 97, even if this is somehow by miracle holding, let's say F6, uh, takes, takes, in the best scenario, you manage to equalize. And it's not really a fun, uh, fun way to play. So bishop d6, 97, okay, we cannot take the rook. We have to take care of other moves as well. So what else is there? So knight takes on d7, it, I'm sorry, bishop takes on c7 doesn't work because of knight of six. So we are calculating, takes, takes, the bishop is under attack. So rook d8. Now, do you see, do you see the tactical motive at White's disposal? Yep, yep, Sicilian player, exactly. Rook b7, queen b7 e5. Now, the question is, how long, how far are we going to calculate this? We don't. We stop. We just stop right here. This ain't fun. I agree. I think this is just lost. Yeah, e5. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe e5. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm seeing that this is bad. So this is bad. So my opponent is getting two very powerful bishops. The king is, by the way, still exposed. So maybe I'll make a draw. Maybe not. So this pawn and the rook is a quite a bad combination against two very powerful bishops. So I just stop right here. Yep. Yep. Uh, I mean, I am stopping as soon as the forcing moves are gone. Okay, let's say queen c7. I'm not sure. There's no difference, probably. Takes, queen d6. The forcing moves are stopping right here. I have to stop at some moment. There's no, no need. Again, I mentioned this before. There's no need to calculate here, here, here. He's going to take, I'm going to take. He's going to play here, I'm going to play here. I mean, you're already making a lot of mistakes. Because the last moves, they are not forcing moves. They are non-forcing moves. So, why do you need to calculate them? Just figure it out as soon as it's on the board. And you know, it's one of the most annoying things. You're calculating so deeply. You're sitting there for something like 20, 30 minutes. Calculating stuff which is never going to appear on the board. So just don't. Yeah, so just don't do that. So okay, so it doesn't mean, it means that bishop d6 is impossible. And we are think we are by the way still here. We are still here in this position. So we are thinking about all of this. So of course, Queen C8 was inaccuracy, but it's better to notice. Oh, thank you, Jack, for the bit. <laughs> so it's better to notice the idea better later than never. So Queen A8, we are thinking what is gonna happen after Rook C7? <laughs> yeah have to calculate thank you thank you i really appreciate it so we are thinking now wait a second is really bishop d6 the only move because i am taught to check the candidate moves all the time so i'm checking i'm checking the candidate moves forcing moves which are creating some threats so i'm checking bishop d8 maybe it's the same now i'm thinking wait a second if after bishop d6 97 was possible yeah. What about now? Probably. So, if I take knight of six, this is the line we calculated. No, we don't need to calculate another time. Um, knight e4. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's uh, white to move, obviously. So, bishop d8. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, black to move. So, knight e4 is just a bad move. Because black, I'm sorry, white simply takes on b7. Uh, this is under attack, this is under attack, and black is losing quite a lot of material. So, what else is there? Knight d7, rook d7. 
I can try to play bishop c6, drive it out, but I'm already seeing a move like, yeah, this is again important. We are checking all of the forced moves. Yeah, 94, rook b7, Hunfin, exactly. Checking all the forced moves. So the forced move, the rook goes away, checks, trades, threats. So threats, yep, queen g4 is annoying. Quite annoying, actually. You cannot play f6 because queen e6. f5 is going to be a mate. So g6, I'm stopping the line right here. That's it. That's the line. Evaluation. Super risky. There is no way I'm getting a good position here. There is a very high probability I'm going to miss something. My intuition says just avoid it. It's not fun. Let's seek something better. So we're looking at this position. <laughs> yeah, there's a mate. So what else is there? So queen a8, apparently, wait a second, after rook c7, there might be another candidate move. So queen d8 is impossible, take the bishop. Rook e8. Now, but what about rook e8? I am super, super cautious. By making a move with such a powerful rook on c7, when I am not demanding from my opponent a forced move. What? What f5? No, it doesn't work. Yeah, so this is super, super risky already approach. I'm not challenging this rook. So white looks completely ready um, to start an attack. Yes, Hanfin, I'm going to play in Finland. Actually, I was so looking forward to playing the Finnish team championships, which was to be held last week. The second stage, unfortunately, it's uh, cancelled, postponed. I don't know what is the fate of the tournament. I mean, Finnish league is one of my favorites. Absolutely. I have a lot of friends there. A lot of friends. Yeah. And, of course, the Finnish team blitz as well. Like a brother country to Latvia. So... It's not a surprise that here white can actually find a move a knight of seven, bishop of six, queen h5 check, and rook b7. Even if without a rook b7. I mean, this is so, so dangerous. <laughs> I'm checking the engine. The engine even finds a move like b4. I mean, even without a move like b4. This is, this is so, so... Uh, yeah, they're postponing all the games. This is so, so risky. And the king is exposed, but okay, it's enough with just rook b7. So rook b7 is the minimal program for white. So after queen b7, queen e8, white keeps the extra pawn. The position has some attacking perspectives. So why calculate for anything else? <laughs> yeah, king. Okay. True. Okay. So we're calculating all of this. And we are seeing, oh my goodness, why did I play then queen c8? Why did I do this? I had to play queen d8. I had to play because after queen d8, rook d1, queen a8, knight d7. Now you simply play rook d8. Knight of 6, bishop f6, bishop f6, g takes, check, king f8, it's nothing. But what is done, is done. You're, go you're playing the position which you have right now. You, you cannot go back, obviously. You made a mistake. Yeah. So, after 98, 95, queen c8, rook c1, queen b8 has to be played. No, no, no. Queen b8. Knight c6 takes, takes. Recognizing that this is a dangerous position, but there's no choice. There is no choice. You just have to go for this. And after e5, here, I managed to hold this position. It's ugly position. It's not fun. But there was nothing better. But again, I wanted to show all of this remained off the game. It wasn't there. I'm pretty sure how much time. That's a very good question. I think... This is one of the critical moments of the game. 
Uh, like I mentioned, it makes no sense to spend so much time in the opening, so like 30, 40 minutes to think about either knight f3 or knight e2 or castle or h3 first. I mean, who cares? Nobody cares. It doesn't really uh, make such a huge difference to the game. I mean, unless you are choosing some very forced and game deciding line, this is one of the critical moments. Uh, you try to convince yourself that queen a8 works. Sure, but prove it with calculation, Kane. Prove it with the calculation. And you'll just come to the same conclusions that it doesn't work. But a big mistake, of course, would be stopping the line here after bishop d6 and saying, okay, this is, this is uh, just great. I'm doing great. But if you are trained in... Tactics, you recognize tactical patterns, you'll spot, you'll spot 97. Did I get a haircut? Yeah, I look nice, don't I? <laughs> no, it's like I mentioned before, it, it's it's a week ago. Old haircut. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I guess that was a compliment. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, let me show you another example. I'll try to find it. Something fun. Okay. How about this one? So the question is going to be this. Black is the move. And it's quite apparent idea that White is threatening to take the bishop. And immediate bishop c6 is a problem because there's a knight hanging. Although, I mean, technically, it is possible. Bishop c6 takes, takes. The queen is also under attack. Doesn't look good. So we are not going to co cook like that. So, how do we solve this problem? I know this is a slightly different topic. I mean, it's uh, coming very, very close uh, together with tactics and if you are good with tactics if you recognize a pattern you can solve this strategic question with a tactical solution so rook c7 looks like an ugly move because the pin is going to remain i have a lovely knight here on c3 of course, I could take on b1, but why would I want to do that? Have to watch out for some queen h7 ideas in the future, so this is why the rook is standing here. And if I recognize the pattern, I am going to find the move, queen c7. So what is queen c7? We are checking. Yep. Yep. The mate on h2. Exactly. Plocro. Exactly, Kane. Yep. And again, if you don't know the idea, if you haven't uh, studied some tactics, if you haven't done some mates, knight e2, queen h2, you're never going to find it. It's simple. Now, my opponent played queen d7. And after knight e2 check, here, take, take, I don't remember was the mate allowed on the board or not but now he resigned of course i mean it's not resignation yeah the bishop h7 and technically still not a mate right yeah puzzles help a lot puzzles help a lot so the question is what kind of mistake did white make here okay he blundered blundered the checkmate but I think it's very crucial before you start to calculate. Yep, not checking the opponent's forcing moves. That's a very good game. I like that. Not checking the forced moves. Yeah, but the e2 is supposedly defended. I think it's very important before you start to do your calculation is you pay attention. What is my opponent's idea? What has changed? And if you think it's the most ridiculous idea I've ever seen. Yeah. And assuming GM hangs a piece. I wasn't a GM at the time, by the way. 
I was only an EM, but still, you always assume your opponent is up to something. And if your opponent plays Queen C7, there must be an idea. What is there? So what is it? Really a free piece? There must be something. If you don't understand, you're, you're sitting more time. If you still don't understand, spend more time. And this is why it was really, really surprising. My opponent was a GM. He missed the idea. And this wasn't a blitz. It was a classical game. Not in time trouble. Nothing. Yeah, this was so weird. I mean, I played Queen C7. Not like I'm crossing my heart here so that my opponent please play Queen D7. <laughs> I mean, for me it was, of course, queen d7 is impossible because there's knight e2, queen h2, and I'm focusing on the other forcing moves. So what are the other forcing moves? I'm checking, is there an attack on the knight? Something like rook c1, there's knight e2 check. I see that. There might be some rook c2 here. And I'm thinking I have at least a minimal program a5, b4, protecting the knight. Also having some ideas on bishop b5s. So I'm stopping the uh, calculation as soon as possible after queen c7 because it makes no sense for me to sit here for half an hour, queen c7, try to calculate everything forward. Then after, let's say, h3, again spend half an hour, try to calculate all the possible moves because they are not forced. All right. Let's move on. Let me show you something else. Maybe g3, I don't know. I think h3. h3 is more secure. All right. Let's exa uh, Next example. Now the question is, here, can we take the pawn? Can we do that? Uh, one of the uh, ideas I would like to mention, which is going to help you to get better at calculation, is try to visualize your variations in and the uh, executed moves in your memory. Of course, everybody is now seeing Queen's Gambit, the brand new Netflix show, how Beth Harmon was memorizing the game by just staring at the ceiling and imagining the border, but the idea is obviously known. Why, for example, Hikaru Nakamura very often is staring somewhere else. He doesn't have an engine in the ceiling, don't worry about that. But he's just bringing his eyes off the board uh, to try to calculate what's happening. And why is that? Why do you think it's that? It's one of the most um, effective strategies for everyone. For every good player. And why is that? <laughs> he's the engine. <laughs> nah, he's just a very good player. Why 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 they're doing this? Because when you're visualizing the position, you are not your eyes are not playing tricks with you. For example, I could show you um one example. I would just have to think. Okay, I'll explain at least in theory. <laughs> At least in theory. So I'm calculating. I'm staring at the board. I'm calculating. I take here. He goes here. He takes. I take. I go here. I go here. Then I play with this piece. And I'm forgetting that this piece was traded in the first or second move. Why is that? Because I'm staring it at the board all the time. It really messes. Sometimes. It really messes with our perception that we are sometimes in our calculation, including pieces which are long gone. And that's the most annoying thing. So I would suggest if you want to become really, really better at calculation, try to imagine the position in your head. And actually here at chess.com, we have quite a wonderful uh, feature, which is blindfold chess. I'm not sure if you've tried it or not, but what really helps is the empty board. Because you're seeing the notation, you're seeing the squares, everything that is missing is just the pieces. So, I mean, it's definitely fun. I would suggest for you to try it out. Yeah? Oh, you, you used to do that? Watch for Prism. 
Yeah. I mean, I'll say honestly, um, I'm not really a big fan of the blindfold because it is so stressful, but it is super, super great tool to calculate there, visualizing the position. I barely re remember the notation. I think I play worse. Yeah, of course, worse in blindfold. I won't, I won't deny, I haven't had so much practice in blindfold. So I'm concerned I would be starting to make some mistakes. So I would need to be super, super concentrated in one game. Naka will win it. That's great. You're good at blindfold. I think I'm also quite good. It's just I don't really like it. But again, it's a great strategy to train your calculation because you're visualizing the positions in your head. And one of my favorite strategies, especially in tournaments, is I've noticed I'm a bit like Swiddler. I mean, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't uh, compare me to him. But if you have seen how Swiddler is behaving himself during games... He's never sitting at the board. He just does not... Yes, yeah, Widler. He just doesn't have the patience. I know the feeling. I know that. It's like you're sitting on fire. You just cannot sit. You just have to move. You just have to do something. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And I've noticed. I've seen him a number of times playing uh, real life. Uh, I've played in Bundesliga most uh, often where I've seen him play. And he's always getting up, always getting up, moving here and there, and always walking, always walking. And I'm doing exactly the same. So it's not like I want to copy-paste uh, uh, Swiddler. I just recognize the need. I just need to move and do something. But what's most important? I'm bringing the lines in my head with me. Pessimistic? Nah, he's just a super nice guy. <laughs> Hi, Mokaluk. He's just super, super nice. Um... And, uh, and uh, I'm when I'm walking, for example, I'm walking at the tournament hall, it might seem I'm just not doing anything. For example, if you're looking Swidler walking here and there, maybe peeking at some other games, he is carrying the variations in his head. Thank you. So by walking, I'm calculating the variations and I'm thinking, wait a second. So if he's going to do this, I'm going to do this. He's going to go here. I'm going to go here. So make quite a lot of circles. Here and there, we are calculating the variation. So the GM comes back, he sees his opponent play the move, and he instantly makes the reply. Why? He already calculated this. So, of course, uh, when we are talking about a good time management, it's a quite a bad strategy. Do it like this. For example, I make a move, and I'm just, I'm just waiting. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just waiting. What is gonna happen now? Oh, you played this? Okay, now I'm gonna think. So that's absolutely wrong approach. You always are expecting something. So if a very good player gets up, he is walking, he is carrying the variations with him. And he's thinking if he's gonna here, he's gonna here, here. Oh, wait a second, there's this interesting continuation. And from afar, he comes back and checks. Yeah, really, there's this continuation. Okay, so I need to walk. I need to think about this. I'm thinking, think. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, there's this intermezzo move and there's this continuation. Okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. And then he comes back. His opponent just played the move. He instantly replies. So that's how it works. So you might think that, what is this? Is this random? It's not random. He was thinking about the position all the time. And that's what I would suggest, at least to competitive players to do. You are never surprised. You always expect and always calculate what your opponent is going to do. Right, but back to this position. So, bishop d5. Let's try to calculate this position. <laughs> right. So, bishop takes on d5. So, what? Rook d6 is a problem. Yeah, rook d6 is a problem. But, but, but first, before we calculate, can we say by intuition that bishop takes on d5 is playable or not playable. Yeah, by the way, intuition. Now, this is super, super tricky subject. And I once had a student, and I was trying to convince him. <laughs> didn't listen to me. And uh, he was saying, my intuition says this is playable. 
I say, how can you say that? How can you say this is playable by your intuition? You did not even calculate this. No, 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 no. I know. I know. My intuition is saying that this is playable. This is wrong. Intuition only suggests what is perhaps possible and it suggests you to calculate. Yeah, yeah, intuition is pattern recognition without calculating. I like how you how you put it like that. Exactly that's what it is. We have spent so much time uh, by studying chess. I recognize the idea. So I recognize the parents. I recognize ideas. Does it mean it's playable? <laughs> Thank you. Does it mean it's playable? Who knows? We need to calculate. We cannot just base our decision on intuition. Yeah, when you're playing Blitz, yeah, perhaps in Blitz, I won't take it. I won't take on Blitz because, ah, yeah, Rook D6 is dangerous. I have so low time. I don't want to be playing this position with increment. So, yeah, okay, maybe in Blitz I'll play a safer move. But let's assume I have a lot of time. So I'm checking this. You know, once I ha actually had one uh, quite a funny situation. Um, I was playing a game. It was a rapid game against international master, a local international master. <laughs> yeah, you also have a story. Yeah, but I also have a story. And I was playing this game, and I blunder. So I blunder something. I'm like, oh, I blunder. Okay, so it's important not to give it away. So I'm just making this poker face, everything is cool, everything is great, he's looking at me. Really? Okay, he didn't take it, he didn't go for the line, which I blundered, I won the game. And in the end, I'm asking, after the game, I'm saying to my opponent, why didn't you play this? Because I blundered. He said, no, remember this, I thought you calculated this. It's so wrong, you, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. You cannot trust your opponent that he has calculated it for you. This is wrong. This is laziness. Calculate first yourself. There is this very nice saying in Russian. In English, it doesn't sound so well. Trust, but verify. Even your, even the best opponents in the world have made mistakes. It's not even bluff. It's just, just a mistake. I mean, they're bound to make mistakes. Uh, you probably you have seen this uh, most one of the most famous uh, famous examples how Carlson Magnus Carlson blundered against Vishwanathan Anand in the World Championship match game six. He played this innocent looking move King D two instead of that King D one. Okay, maybe you don't remember the game doesn't matter. And of course, yeah, you remember this. Okay, great. And he blundered it. So what to do? Is he gonna like? <gasps> Uh, I just blundered something, right? Of course not. He is sick and calm, tried to make a poker face like nothing happened. So why Anand did not notice? Why did not he notice this? Because the motive was not there a move before. And it's super, super big difference. So imagine if somebody would come to Anand and say, Hey, listen, Vichy, there's a combination. Can you find it? Oh, oh right. Okay, this is easy stuff, right? He has a super important information. There is something. But when you're playing a game, you expect some best games from your opponent. He will find in one sec. Absolutely. But when you're playing a, a game against the, the best players in the world, or maybe not the best players in the world, but some very good opponent, and you don't expect him to make mistakes, and he makes a normal looking move, are you immediately um, expecting there's a combination? Of course not. You're not expecting this because you already had some expectation where this game is going to be heading and Anand missed it. He just walked past it and Kassin just collapsed, just collapsed on the board. Just He was so unhappy. I mean, he was having a heart attack right there. And Anand knew at that moment. He knew. Yeah, he knew. He had it. He instantly knew it. He saw the expression of Kassin, instantly knew it. Yeah, so... Not no words were exchanged between the opponents, but they perfectly understood each other. That one missed, I mean one made a bit blunder, and the second missed it. Right. And again, why it's a great idea to study the puzzles, for example, here at the chess.com, you have the information. And it's a super major difference. You're solving a puzzle, you're training your calculation, and you know there is something. 
So I'm going to sit here forever until I'm going to find it. And you know the biggest difference is in a tournament game, you don't know it. You don't know it. You feel there is this intuition, this pattern recognition. You feel there is something because I've solved something like this. I recognize the idea. But is it really there? Uh, no one knows. So of course you could wait for some uh, bystanders. Yeah, yeah, there is a combination. I just check, check, checked with the engine. Yeah, it works. It works. <laughs> it doesn't work like that, right? So you have to calculate. So let's go back to this example. So what about bishop d5? So bishop d5, let's let's try to calculate this. So bishop d5, let's check all of the forcing moves. Intuition here says nothing. It's it's absolutely irrelevant. I'll tell you immediately. The difference of the potential, can I take it here? The king on g8, it works. King on h7, it doesn't work. So the question is, does your intuition recognize that? No. The, the intuition just says, I recognize the pattern. So the actual position, you have to calculate on the board. So again, let's try this. So bishop d5. So the first move which we calculate, bishop d5, queen d5. Draw the line. That's it. I have a pawn. I have a great position. There is no need to calculate a4, what is going to happen after that. It doesn't matter. You evaluate the position. A fake reaction. Yeah, that's for kids, mostly, Yosef. That's for kids. Yeah, kids love that. Make these <laughs> facial expressions just to confuse their opponents. So bishop d5, we checked it. We are not concerned. Let's check everything else. What else is there? Some checks, some threats, some takes. Okay, take doesn't work. Uh, threats. Check. King h2. So, now rook d6 is just ridiculous. Bishop f7, that's a discovered check. Okay, let's remove that from the equation. Uh, yeah, the king position is going to be important. I'm going to explain that. Yeah, I'm going to explain that. So I just wanted to mention that this is something your intuition is not going to recognize. You have to do it by calculation. So bishop d5, bishop d5 doesn't work. Bishop h3 doesn't work. We can check bishop g4 if you want. But again, it's just a ridiculous move. So we'll just play whatever. I mean, rook d2. And again, rook d6, the pin. The most dangerous counterattack is impossible because of bishop f7. Okay, so that is clear. That is clear. We have to make it sure. Now, let's check the queen pin. Is there such a thing as queen pin? No, I guess not. So something like queen d7, queen d8, whatever. We just take it. That's it. Now, finally, we have come to rook d6. Before we calculate this, we have to understand... What is the threat? What is the threat? What is white threatening? I'm sorry, black. So, for example, I play queen e5. I try to solve the position with an aggressive manner, but after rook e5, queen a8, we're losing quite a lot of material because of the pin. Okay, I think it's quite important we see that. So, the same applies for queen c4. Bishop takes. Queen b7, and we lose material. Not fun. What else is there? We have to defend against the threat. So now I'm thinking about queen e4. And now, after queen e4, you can never go for this position if you don't recognize the tactical solution which is at your disposal. Hi, Sasha Duff. Thank you for joining. I'm happy to see some very qualified players here. Also. So queen e4. And what's the idea? The idea is to play bishop e6. We just remove the queen, queen from the pin. And we are threatening to play queen g6. Now, in order to properly calculate this. Hi, Shahar. 
we are gonna going to go by brute force and this brute force is very important when there are not so many pieces on the board you cannot base this on intuition don't do that please we just physically calculate every single move now let's check every single possible move here so after queen e4 we want to play bishop e6 what is that a4 we take we don't care the queen is under attack black cannot take the rook g5 f5 is ridiculous king moves are ridiculous we take rook takes okay now this is something actually yep yep rook d5 now this is something we are getting somewhere queen a8 rook here takes takes oh dear bishop d5 but let's calculate f3 takes takes and we are winning the pawn end game now this is quite important but please don't stop at this moment that you see oh queen a there's a pin okay this is dangerous i cannot do that calculate until the end so queen e4 rook d5 doesn't work rook moves don't work i'm gonna play bishop e6 so it becomes quite apparent after i think i made it quite sure after one minute i excluded every single possible move that only queen move is possible here now by brute force i'm calculating every single queen move so the obvious move is queen d8 queen d7 makes no sense i just take on e6 the queen is still under attack black cannot take on d1 which is the biggest idea so let's check queen d8 and now because of f5 no 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 f5 is still bishop e6 and bishop f5 is just queen e7 this is just bad yeah just bishop f7 is killing the game right uh so queen d8 queen d8 and now if you recognize the tactical pattern you can find bishop e6 rook d1 and queen g6 So black cannot take on g6 because the king is pinned. King f8 is mate. Queen king h8, queen h5, and I stop the calculation right here. I don't need to calculate this further because I'm thinking if he's gonna play either here or here, I'm gonna play queen f7. I'm happy. I'm probably winning with four pawns for the exchange. How many positions I can... <laughs> Watchful Prism, I'm not a computer. <laughs> I don't think I can compare with the computer. Uh, in a second? I don't know. Haven't tried it. So maybe not really seeing a position, but how many lines you can calculate? 3,000 per minute. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So I think the most important thing for... <laughs> yeah... Uh, most important thing is to recognize the correct idea as quickly as possible or even recognize it at, at all i mean let's start with that you just recognize the idea even at, at all so even if you're spending so much time you find it in then there are many people who are even not finding it after they're spending so much time so this is my so-called minimal program i'm happy i'm stopping the calculation i'm drawing the line this is great so after queen e4, let's check every... <laughs> no, it's not really like that. Queen e8. Yeah, queen e8. So, but again, before we are checking all, all of the other moves is... Can you see these moves? Yeah, I can see without, without a board. So if I would... If I would... Uh, uh, before this... If uh, let's say let's say there's this position and before black is to play, I already I'm thinking here, can I play a bishop takes on d5? Let's say he is to make a move here, and I'm bringing this position with me when I'm walking around, like Swiddler. <laughs> I like the comparison. I like to be compared with Swiddler. I mean nobody is comparing, so I have to do it myself. Right. So after queen e4, we're checking by brute force every single. Yeah, we checked bishop d5. No, wait, so we did not. Bishop d5, rook d5, queen c6, just rook e5. Yeah. 
so it's not really a big deal. And now let's check every single possible move by the queen. This is bad. This is we just checked. Queen b8. Now, about a move like queen b8, it generates no threats. And by definition, those quiet moves which don't generate no threats, they are the non forcing moves, leave you with more options. Yeah, definitely it's not boy. Seeing the entire board is a great way to start it. So, queen c7, queen c5, what else is there? Queen e8 might be tricky. So, I'm going to pay attention to these moves. Queen c7, queen c5, and queen e8. Let's start with queen e8, what was recommended by Sasha Duff. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking in the game. Yeah, yeah, Sicilian player, it's exactly the same, exactly the same, yep. I'm thinking my minimal program, if I find nothing there, is bishop e6, queen g6, uh, queen h6, and bishop c4. There's no check. I have two pawns for the exchange. The third pawn is here. If I manage to win that, for example, I play a4, I trade queens. I win this pawn, I just create two passed pawns at the king side, which I already know by experience is very close to winning. Hi, David Price. So this is my minimal program. So if he is indeed... I'm right now calculating this, all of this in my head. So if he is indeed going to do this after rook d6, queen e4, if he is indeed going to play queen e8, I already have prepared. I'm going to play bishop e6, queen g6, queen h6 with a good position. But if this is really going to happen, and if he is really going to play queen e8, and we are going to reach this position in the actual game, of course, I remember that my minimal program was bishop e6, but I'll be looking for more. And I'm always doing like that. And I think it's a great strategy. So, of course, now with the engines on, engine finds, queen f3 is a better move. So, we are protecting the rook. We are threatening to take here. And now, queen d8, I guess, is just bad. Take. Uh, take. Uh, this is not really so obvious here. Here, from afar, you would have to see that f3 check the only move which is actually winning and not losing is king h3 and white is winning because of the exposed king it's one one line very narrow line so be careful so i didn't see that this queen of three of course i'm not seeing queen of three in the actual game i don't need that so I'm trying to find those minimal programs. And again, I'm checking queen c5 is going to be the same. And after queen c7, I see again, this is my minimal program. I'm going to find something else. But again, queen c7 is not a forcing move. He is not threatening anything. And I thought, if, he, if he's going to do this in the actual game, I'll find more. And I did. He played queen c7. I found, I found queen f4, pinning the queen, threatening bishop e6. And after queen e7, we traded uh, rooks and I entered an endgame with extra pawn. So the question is, honestly, did I saw that? No, I didn't see queen f4. So my minimal program was, I'm going to play bishop e6, queen g6, pretty much on anything. Although I used brute force to calculate this, and as soon as he played queen c7, I checked maybe there is more because this is not a forcing move. Yep, and I found it queen f4. Although the engine is saying rook d4 was better, but this is already slightly too advanced, so I'm not gonna touch that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, this is a lovely example. You're going to love it, like I did. <laughs> um, yeah. 
So this is a game. Now this again is going to be could be slightly difficult, but again I would like to at least explain uh, the thought process. So here, black is the move. White just played knight e2, threatening to take the bishop. So there is a pin, potential pin of the bishops. But we have solved some puzzles. And a trained tactical player will immediately spot the idea. Now, do you see the idea? Do you recognize the idea? Yeah, sure, Kane. Bishop f2. Very quickly spotted. Why is that? Because my my intuition says it. Yep, yep. Not bishop to f2, knight g4. Right, right. All of that is clear. Now the question is, do we play it? And there, there are going to be some players going to say, yeah, yeah, sure, let's play that. Yeah, my intuition. Now this is, this is where I, I always laugh. My intuition says this is playable. <laughs> It's so wrong, it's so wrong. So your intuition actually is saying what you need to calculate. Yeah, you need to calculate this. Sure, great, you see that, but you cannot make such a big decision by not calculating. Okay, let's try to do this. So bishop takes an extra, we're calculating this in the head, but I'm gonna move the pieces so that I'm helping you to follow the process. So we are calculating. King f2 is the forcing move. King d1, we don't care. We don't care. I mean, king d1, okay, just, just go there. I mean, it's not threatening anything here. No, 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 it's not so easy. It's not so easy. Now, let's check the forcing moves. So, of course, knight g4 was the idea. Can I play queen d4 check? Because that looks like it leads to a mate. Great, let's do this, right? Let's do this. Now, what mistake did we make? We already assumed that our opponent is going to make the only move which we like the most. And that is the most common mistake. Don't make this mistake. Always understand that your opponent can make, uh, can choose between continuations. So King of three. And that's it. The attack is over there's nothing so you just blew your biggest chance so queen d4 doesn't work um yeah it's it's hard to watch for prism of course but this is why we are practicing this it's uh, it's difficult yeah to make the make the right decisions in the beginning uh, queen, yeah, white is simply winning. White is winning. There's no, the problem is, there is no continuation. There is no continuation. So something like the bishop is under attack. So the bishop is joining the game. And something like, you need some piece. Yeah, he's up a piece. So something like bishop d3, maybe queen c3. There's no continuation. So you, you can check, of course, um, uh, the forced lines. We can just skip this because I already calculated this. You have ideas. I mean, I'm not gonna argue. Of course, it looks still risky, but I'll just, I'll just, uh, yeah, it does. They don't work. They don't work. <laughs> they don't work. You mean here, knight g4? Knight g4 is just knight c4, and the bishop is joining the game, and the king always escapes to e2. It just doesn't work. So I'm just gonna spare you some time here. Short castle. Maybe it's just too slow. Okay, but I think we can exclude queen d4. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. I was definitely looking at queen d4, but after king of three, I was unable to find the force continuation because we lose control of the e2 square after knight c4, and this is quite paramount. So we cannot do this. So knight g4 is the correct move. Now, after knight g4, how many moves we are checking again? Let's imagine this branch of trees. So we cannot just pick one move. Yeah, after king f3, it's knight e5 when we are mating our opponent. King f4 is queen f6, must be a mate. Uh, king f2, now this idea will work. 
king e3 we just take the piece okay this is great everything is working i'm i've played such a wonderful condonation so again do you see the mistake i just made yeah we need to make sure we are calculating every single move you just have to physically walk them down every single one of them so king g1 yeah i'm sorry yeah yeah king g1 is queen d4 mate king f3 is knight e5 mate so that leaves only king e1 now queen g5 is bad because after knight c4 our queen is under attack yeah king g1 is just losing on the spot so still in player so knight e3 the queen cannot go here again we are trained to check if there are other forcing moves if there are intermezzo moves the so-called swishing sooks can he give me a check which maybe changes something no he cannot i mean there's nothing technically maybe knight of seven some intermezzo but this comes with a check so it's just ridiculous so queen c3 and you know what's the funny thing i think this is an easy line to calculate yeah this is not a puzzle it's a game <laughs> It's an actual game. So this is the fourth line. Bishop F2. Knight G4 check. We are making sure that all the ridiculous continuations don't work. Knight E3 is a forced move. Oh. Hey, thank you, Watchful Prison, for, for the gift. <laughs> yeah, Sicilian player is going to appreciate that for sure. And so do I. <laughs> thank you, buddy. Um, so after Queen C3, we still cannot take Queen G5 uh because of knight c4 and there's annoying pin <laughs> thank you so we take it here and now this is the first moment he is the best isn't he <laughs> this is the first moment when we have a choice we have to choose so it's either king f1 and king d1 king king of two king d1 we can never skip the other uh, other continuation high cool gaming so for example let's start with king d1 the thing about the king d1 is it's not really uh such a dangerous move for the same for the simple reason it's not a forcing move he is not creating a threat to take the knight so the knight is remaining here and there is more than one continuation where black is getting very happy. So let's just pick one. Queen takes on g5. Knight c4. We're still down a piece. Queen g4 check. King c2 has to be played. Queen. Oh, there's many moves. I mean, even queen e2 check. Knight d2 a long castle and if you play something like this around here a trained player will just stop i just stop the game i mean the calculation right here <laughs> yeah so i'm seeing i have a very powerful attack i have one two three four potentially five pieces into attack black i'm sorry white is pinned there is nothing he has some pieces yeah so some rook d2 queen e4 ideas uh, many many threats so white is just busted so this is just one condemnation i could have been playing something else after knight takes on c4 i could have played for example queen g4 check here um i think actually queen takes on e4 also is good queen takes on e4 yeah, this is also great. King b3 and long castle. Rook, d, rook d3 is a big threat. There's many, many moves. Many, many moves. So when I'm going for this line, I have to pick my minimal program. And don't do, do it like this. Oh, I'm going to pick something. Don't do that. Like, oh, there's going to be something. Have something already. Figure it out. And you pick something minimal. And as soon as you get there, you're checking if there is more. To be honest, I don't remember. I don't remember what was my minimal program. I think it was Queen G5, Queen G4, a long castle. But 
I mean, this is an actual game I played something like five years ago, so I don't remember really. So, but most fun part is after knight g2 check, king f2, because this is a forcing move. White is attacking the knight. And after queen takes on g5, the material we have extra pawn, I'm sorry, extra piece actually at this moment, high pass pawn, king g2, we don't care, just bishop e6, we have extra pawn, the king is exposed. And after knight c4, do you spot this check? No. Black is up a pawn. Knight e3, we trade everything. And after king g2, here, here, takes, black is up a pawn. No, 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 we already, we already... Cochlear material, we sacrificed a piece. There goes one piece. There goes the second piece. We are up a piece already. Now we are equal. And this is just a trade. This is just a trade. So we are up a pawn. I think I calculated something like here. This moment, queen c4, I stopped. That's it. I'm stopping the line. Because I feel that this already is not a forced continuation so queen g7 is a possibility here queen c4 is a possibility i don't know what he's going to choose i see that after queen e5 i have queen e6 that's it i'm stopping the line so i saw all of this here i cannot play bishop f2 if i'm not sure what's happening after knight g4 knight e5 queen e4 blah, 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 all of these lines i have the tree in the head and when I'm sure I'm seeing all of this, mostly walking around, I mean, of course, if I'm to move, I, I cannot walk around. It's not legal. Yeah, queen g7 long castle or queen e4 long castle, Mazdamir. And I play bishop f2. And what happened in the game? <laughs> king f2, knight g4, he played king f3. He played king f3. Knight e5 resignation. <laughs> Uh, Sashadav, uh, yeah, you can, you can send me a whisper. Maybe I'll check it if I'll have the time. No promises, of course, I'll check it. Yeah, he played King of Three. So, I mean, the question is, I was like, really? <laughs> I mean, really? So I spent all of this time to calculate all of those crazy lines. And now you just play King of Three and, and uh, blunder everything in a couple of moves. So it's made in five. Yeah, that's it. It's easy, mate. Yeah, it's easier. But then again, from the other hand, it's like, ah, ah. Okay, I mean, he blundered. So, okay, I'll take it, of course. But, um, and now finally, the fi fun part. The fun part. Do you think if bishop f2 is the best move? Um, Dirk bro, I don't think there's a mate. We tried to mate it. I mean, my opponent tried to help me, but technically there's no mate. <laughs> right. So all of this is a forced line, right? Here, here, here. This is a forced line, forced line, forced line. Here, 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 here. Now, we evaluate the position. And the position. How do you evaluate this, by the way? No, it's not made in... F I mean, it's made in 5 after blunder, king f3. I mean... He doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to do that. So, how do you evaluate this position? Black has a pawn. But white has some sort of a compensation. Hard win. Yeah, hard win. Maybe a win... Probably just a big advantage because a pawn is a pawn, but this is the whole game ahead. And now let's go back to the starting position. Now this is gonna be not fair. So the best move, according to the engines, is queen d3. Which of course I saw. And apparently to the engines... This positional advantage of having the opponent's pieces pinned is worth more than going for that complicated line, winning the pawn, going to the end game, 
and the engines say that this is better. <laughs> I mean, this is insane. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is insane. I mean, no human being will ever do this. So I will play maybe this in Blitz. Yeah, I don't have time to calculate this. Although, I mean, it's super tempting to play Bishop F2. But if I'm down on the last seconds, I'll never gamble. Never. Because I don't have the time for this. But, yeah, in Blitz, I'll just play Queen D3 because I am able to control. I'm able to control things. Hello, Lolly. Yeah, so that that's that's the funny part. I mean, you play a wonderful combination, and the engine says this is not the best move. <laughs> okay, let me show you something else. We're covering this position quite a bit. Um, there's something interesting. Something interesting. Okay, let me show you one very difficult example. I know I'm getting already so difficult, but you know, these difficult examples, they are the easiest to explain. So, this is my game. I was playing it last year in, in one, one tournament in France. Let me check if I missed some theory which I wanted to mention. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, by the way, by the way, I don't think I, I really mentioned it and uh, stressed how important is this is a great idea, a great idea. And I've used it so many times is the so-called elimination method. What is the elimination method? Where when you're looking at a position and it looks complicated. Yeah, everything is so complicated and uh, he has so many moves and you're not sure can you do this. So you just ask yourself, which piece is going to move? This? No. This? No. This? No. Pawns? No. This? No. King? No. And in then you're just left with something like just one move. One or two moves. And that's it. And when you're looking at this so-called complicated position, then things are not so complicated anymore. <laughs> you want to take on d5. Uh, yeah, that's a good move. That's a good move. Yeah, yeah. It's C takes C takes definitely advantage for white. Nobody's arguing. But I want to explain now this. Um, this idea, rook e3, rook e3, rook g3, something might be slightly too slow. Now, I, what do you think? What do you think about the move knight c6? Yep. What do you think? What does your intuition say? Insane. You want to give you want to give a fork on d5. Intuition says you win. I'm not sure about that. Hangs by <laughs> Hangs the piece by intuition. I love that. You don't believe knight c6 is good? Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Um, yeah, because when you're looking back at this move, at this position, does it seem like queen c8 is a mistake? Artificial? I like that. You know, it's funny you mentioned this kind of thing. I always, when somebody says it's artificial or it looks weird, um, I like to bring this quote, which was once said by Vichy Anand. And he said, I don't care. If it's weird, if it works, it works. It's so simple. So who cares? I mean, it's weird. Yeah. Artificial. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's arguing, but it works. So it's as simple as that. And uh, he's ready to step over his so-called step boundaries. 
And if he can calculate, so now I'm talking about myself, just talking in third person about Vichy, if he's able to calculate this, it works, then it works. It's as simple as that. Uh, yeah, so let's try to calculate this. Let's try to calculate. So knight c6, and we are doing this in the head. In the head, because you are not allowed to calculate and physically moving the pieces, right? I mean, you cannot, like, try to test. Okay, whatever, whatever. So it's like, you know, a really bad practice is you play the game, and it's, ah, whatever, I just, I don't care. Ah, whatever is going to have to happen. Just, just throw a coin. <laughs> That's a very bad practice. Maybe you'll get lucky this time, the other times you won't. So let's check knight c6. Yeah, knight c6. C takes. Let's check all of the forced moves. Knight e4, c takes. We don't care. Black is losing the bishop. Bishop d5, queen e5. We don't care. We are up upon. <laughs> Watchful prince. Yeah, thank you. Nah, you won't allow me to draw arrows. I mean, that, that would be something, right? I mean, no, you know, you know, I, I've seen this in, in sometimes in the games. It's like this. It's so ridiculous. I mean, I'm sitting and playing against the player. He's doing like. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so funny to watch. I mean, just just don't do that, please. You can do all of this in the head, of course. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it looks funny, really. So, yeah, of course, knight a5. Do we stop it? We don't, because there's a pin. There's a pin, guys. So, queen b2. We can still take bishop d5, rook e7. Do we stop the line yet? You do fingers? Ah, <laughs> no, don't do the fingers. So, maybe the rook is trapped. Let's check it. Bishop e6. Bishop f4, there is no knight c6. Okay, doesn't work. And if he goes something like knight c4, my minimal program is bishop c4. Doesn't mean I'm going to take it. It means I keep my pawn. I need to draw the line. I draw the line, I'm saying I have the pawn. Should be great. So this means... Let me check again. C takes anything else? Any bishop moves physically? No. No bishop, no nothing. So knight a5 has to be played. So knight a5, queen b2. Let's check everything else. Some intermezzo moves, some threats. We're checking every single forced move. Hi, Baklam. Yeah, doing great. Doing great. Enjoying my bootcamp. How are you doing? So after knight c6, it becomes apparent that knight c6 is a piece of cake. You just take c takes on d5, you're up material. So this means queen c6. So far, so good. Now, c takes d5, we take it. Queen d5, we don't care. Take, take, rook e7, we have extra pawn. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a lovely, day, a lovely way to spend the Friday evening. <laughs> Yeah, good luck. Maybe you can try to combine it with some following the stream. <laughs> so bishop d5. This is still under, under attack, by the way. c4 is the only move. And again, how many moves does he have? Bishop g2 is ridiculous. Bishop c4, I don't care. I have a great position. Bishop e6 is possible. But I'm winning back a pawn, uh, uh, back a piece. You will try. <laughs> D5. Queen goes, I don't know where. D takes. F takes. And I draw the line. Again, I don't think any further here because this is not necessary. I mean, there's more than one combination. You would ask the engine. The engine will say there's queen h3. So... Would would you if you would ask me, am I spotting this in the actual game in the calculation? There's queen h3. Of course not. I mean, I'm seeing this move. So when I'm going for this line, I ha I'm picking some kind of um, <laughs> some kind of uh, uh, minimal program. So my minimal program here is just I, I can play at least uh, bishop e3, right? 
and he has this weakness, although I have a weakness on c4, I should be slightly better, because this, this can be targeted, and the pawn on c4, not so much. Okay, so, bishop e6, we don't care. Is there something else? Yep, bishop e4. There you go. After bishop e4, ah, oh, bishop d6, bishop d6 is nothing. You just, just take it. Just take it. Uh, rook e8 again, you just take it. Yeah, you just take the piece. So this leaves bishop e4. And it, it can be quite a cold shower because you think, wait a second, what is this? d5, I just take it. And he plays queen g6. And you think, wait a second, what is this? I play f3. And he plays bishop f6. Intermezzo move. And to be honest, now I'm talking probably about quite a competitive player. You have to see this here. You have to see this here. Because you cannot go otherwise knight c6. Because this is a forced line. So knight c6, queen c6, c takes, bishop takes, c4, bishop e4. F3. Now finally we come to the main move. F3. Let's check all of the moves. Bishop F3, I don't care. I just either take here or here. Looks great. Yeah. What else is there? Some bishop F5 takes bishop E6. Try to trap the rook. Nah, it's never going to be trapped. You just play bishop A3. I'm not even mentioned D5. So, this leaves only bishop f6. So, he removed the bishop from the pin we have to take. Now, do we stop the line here? Do you feel confident? <laughs> do you feel confident you can stop the line here? Yes, queen e4. It's great you saw that. So, queen e4. This we can spot in the calculation because we are doing the same tactic sweep not only for ourselves but also from our opponent. Yeah, of course, that's GM level, but you know, I'll tell you honestly, this is not easy example. I just specifically chose this example to show you to explain the thought process, how is the decisions made. And if you're able to visualize this in the head, I mean, this line, it's, to be honest, not really so difficult. It's a very forcing line. Of course, assuming you can visualize this in the head, you're not making big mistakes before. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it, it's not really special. It's long. Yes, but not special. It's long. So bishop f6, queen e4 takes, <laughs> bishop d4, Bishop e3, bishop here. Now, when we are calculating this line in the head from afar, we are still not made knight takes on c6. We are still sitting in that position. And this is the position we are seeing. Do you feel something about this position? Because when you are calculating, your intuition says which direction should you play and now what does tell your intuition here do you feel something yeah it's hard it's hard queen d1 and what queen d1 and what what do you feel so that the rook on a8 so the rook on a8 might be under attack and again again let's go back slightly yeah, and queen e5, exactly. Let's go back slightly. Again, back to this monstrous example. Forced, 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 forced. All of this is forced. Other lines, we don't care. Headache. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, my longest line I've ever calculated, actually. Uh, 15 moves ahead, no mistakes. Uh, I mean, so far, it's still not 15 moves. But I, ju I just wanted to show this because it's such a lovely example. Queen b5. 
Unfortunately, it's going to be rook d8 and knight d7. We have to spot that during the calculation. Otherwise, it's a great idea. Yeah, I like that, to stop the knight from developing. Yes, white needs to do something. White needs to make a forcing move. And again, use elimination method. Not bishop. Not bishop. Either a queen or a pawn. One of these. Super Vani. Actually, Super Vani, that's, that's a very nice point you brought there. How do you think? How long should you be able to calculate this? Hi, Birdsmith, by the way. How long should you be sitting here? Assuming we are playing 90 minutes for the entire game, plus 30 seconds of a classical game, how long are we going to sit here? For this moment. Maybe for Sasha Duff it's going to be easier to answer because he is a competitive player like me. He's an international master, so he probably knows, feels at least. 15 minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Well, good luck, Cocklet, all of this in three minutes. 15 minutes. That's that's closer. I don't know. I mean, depends how fast, how quickly how accurately you're calculating i would say this is one of the critical moments of the game it's as simple as that and you want to spend your time on critical moments so you don't want to think oh i'm gonna sit here for something like half an hour to think should i play h3 or should i play a4 <laughs> right it doesn't matter i mean who cares so is it h3 or a4 I would spend as much time as I need, but still not burn my entire time and keep some time for the remaining game. How can you recognize critical moments? That's a nice question. I guess it comes with experience. You feel that this decision could decide the game. Now you just, you just feel this is a decisive moment. Either I win, either this is a draw, either there's a very strong attack, either there's something else. So it's not just some shuffling pieces here and there, not some quiet maneuvers. Yeah. Yeah, so so definitely that's a critical moment. Again, we cochlear this. Cochlear this, cochlear this, cochlear this. So queen d1 is quite a forced line. Bishop f6 is technically not a good move. And after e5, threatening with queen d5, any early queen d5 is met by knight a6, the knight comes to c5. He cannot take, again, queen d5, that's a double attack, nice tactic. c5, he cannot take, because there's going to be queen d5, knight a6, this bishop takes away the knight, rook d8. Queen of three. Uh, now I'm fast forwarding. I'm not going to torture with this example. Knight e7, e6, c6. I'll tell you honestly, I saw this. Yeah, I calculated all of this. I saw this. Because again, this, this felt like a forcing line. So the only thing which I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure is here. I wasn't sure about bishop c3. But when I when I was thinking about this, I thought probably he is not going to play bishop c3 for the very simple reason. It's a dangerous move. The bishop can be under attack. It's easy to miss a continuation. Some queen d3 or queen b3 or maybe queen d5, queen c4. This bishop is always going to be under attack. So bishop f6 felt like a safe move. To be honest, I didn't really see what's going to happen after bishop c3 although computer says it's queen a4 and bishop takes on b6 and white is still better but not winning not winning so this is what happened in the game c5 all of the, rook d8 is the only move queen f3 97 is the only move sacrificing the pawn so that i am threatening actually to gain it back 
Um, you mean here? Queen d3? I don't know. It's bishop b4, bishop c5. Maybe something like this. Knight c6. I mean, I don't know what is this, to be honest. I didn't calculate the minimal the minimal uh, program, I think. I, I thought in the worst case, in the worst case, after bishop c3, I can play queen a4. Not to let the knight out. But I just didn't believe he's going to play bishop c3, to be honest. Yeah, maybe I made a mistake myself. I should have paid attention to this. But it just looked such an unnatural move. And again, and again, guys, let me remind you, I was still here. So I couldn't really spend too much time for every single move. I'm trying to close this line um, as quickly as possible. Otherwise, I'm burning my entire game time here. And after bishop c3, I thought it's queen a4 and should be something. That that was my minimal advantage, a minimal uh, minimal program. What happened there is he played exactly all I calculated. After queen f3, knight e7, e6, c6. Yeah, knight c5 I did not expect. I was only thinking about knight e5. My opponent was a French player. Pollard Gaetan. He actually played great in the tournament. Yeah, lazy Arthur. I know, I know, I know. I sometimes, sometimes also lazy. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah, I didn't calculate bishop c3 too much. It just felt unnatural. So, yeah, knight e5 was the move I was expecting. Queen e4, rook e5. And I thought, should be good. I drew the line. I thought, I can play g3, bishop h3, bishop f4 ideas. With this pawn on c6, I thought... It's going to be something. So that's my intuition. Am I able to properly calculate this until the end? I have to stop somewhere. So I have to draw the line. Uh, Snot boy. It was satisfying to see that my calculation was good. Yeah. So you, you calculate it so far. And... Uh, oh, whoa. Thank you, Watchful Prism. Thank you. No, it's not a raid. It's... Oh, it, it is a raid. Hey, Metal Eagle! How did I miss that? Ah, here it is. And thank you, Watchful Prison, for the cheer bit. And uh, welcome here, Metal Eagle. Hope you had a great stream. Um, right now, I'm running my bootcamp, which is by the number, I don't know, some like 15th bootcamp. Usually, I'm doing this on Friday, Friday afternoon, European time. So, we are Talking about uh, training calculation. So, I hope it, hoping we are getting somewhere and that you had a great stream yourself. So, welcome everybody. Hope you're going to enjoy the time here. Right. So, he played knight c5. And after knight c5, c7, I didn't, I didn't calculate this already. So, I had to stop at some point. And after queen c6, white is winning. Yeah. White is winning because this pawn is decisive. Technically, technically, black has two rooks for the queen. So if you're thinking about this, like, I mean, oh, two rooks versus queen, that, that's great, right? For the player who has the two rooks. No, no, it's not really like that. It really depends. Yeah, he is, he is super, super generous. Thank you, Watchful Prism. So, uh... It usually usually depends uh, depends uh, on the activity of the pieces. Yeah, five thousand bits. I think that's a record, actually. Actually, so <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Right. So okay, Sicilian player, take, take care. And the G three bishop H three is deciding the game, and I'll just show you how this game ended. G three. Also preparing bishop f4, bishop h3, here, 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 bishop d8, here, now bishop b5, and a6 is a big threat. And the final move is, yeah, can you now spot the win, by the way? Yeah, take care. 
Can you spot the win here? <laughs> yeah, Hampton. Now this is a, a great great win by the way. So after Queen Queen C6, yeah, okay, I'm gonna tell you that Queen C6, King H8. Now, can you find a win here? Now this is a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, Sasha Dev. Yeah, I mean this definitely was a GM GM puzzle. I mean a GM calculation, but like I mentioned, I, I did honestly say it before. It's a very hard example. Uh, but uh, for for good players, you need to calculate all of this. Uh, for me, I would say it wasn't the most difficult I've calculated, but the longest. Definitely the longest, not the most difficult one. Can you find a win? Watch for Prism. Ah! <laughs> now you know there's, there's, you know there's a win. Okay, okay, okay. Bishop a6 is knight a6. And what? Where's the win? I could actually uh, lend this to chess.com so that they would include this in the puzzle. So this is quite a nice example. <laughs> but unfortunately, there's more than one win. Yeah, probably it won't make it. And uh, chess.com puzzles uh, typically involve... One week. No, listen. Yeah. Now we are talking about solving puzzles. But when we are solving puzzles, it's very important you see the motive. If you see the motive, queen e6, then bishop c4. No, queen e6, knight e6. Hey, flash of steel. How are you doing? a4? a4, a5, b takes. What? Seemingly black is solid. I mean, I just love this game. I just love this game. So, uh, my opponent was rated something like slightly under 2 300. Still a very good player. He was performing great in the tournament. I think he beat some GMs, maybe EMs, I don't remember. Bishop a6, knight a6, queen e6. Yeah, we can have a look at that. So, what about this? Here. Here. What is this? I mean, rook c7. Everything is protected. Doesn't seem much. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. So again, I'll I'll return back. So the motive. I mean, this is a difficult puzzle, but it's possible to solve if you if you understand the motive. So what is the motive? Bishop h3 is a 5. And by the way, I'm still not sure if bishop h3 is still a threat. Because what happens? Bishop h3, let's say I do nothing. I, I just do nothing. You take bishop e6, takes, takes, rook c7. Is, the, is that a win? Queen f3, Bert Smith. Um... <laughs> no bishop d3, no. Queen f3, I play king g7. I'm not sure what you're threatening. Bishop c4. Yeah, bishop c4 is a serious move. Bishop c4, let's say I'll play something like... <laughs> it's difficult to pick a move. Maybe f5. Yeah. You'll play bishop, f bishop c4. I'll play, let's say, f5. Let's say you take... Take, take, here, take. Now, are you sure this is so easily winning? I'm not sure it's winning at all. So we only have queen for a rook and bishop. It's not really that such a decisive advantage. Shakar, I like how you said that. That's 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 great. That's great. And mating, it's uh, going to be going to be difficult because I mean the only idea I can see to mate is on h7, and the rook is always going to take the pawn on c7. So how do I do that? 
Yeah, the knight is strong, but the thing about the knight is it's passive. So what about the other idea? Uh, Shahar mentioned queening the pawn. Queening the pawn. Yeah, g4 maybe, queen 8. Ah, oh, there you go. I like that. Bishop g2, queen 8. I like the idea. So let's test this. For example, bishop g2. So he wants to play queen a8. So that after the queen trade, the pawn is marching towards the queen. Pawn doesn't have the queen, but that's the best we have got. So let's say king g7. So there is no queen a8. Rook c7. The bishop is protected. Can we improve this idea? Now, I, <laughs> it's not obvious. I know that. Hey, Pixenix, you, you, you nailed it. You nailed it. Yep. Bishop b5, the idea to play queen e8. It's as simple as that, because queen e8, we are threatening with a mate. And now what happens after king g7? Now we play bishop a6. And now there's a check. Now this is lovely. I was so hoping this is going to happen in the game, but I think he resigned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this, this bishop b5, yeah, it's very nice. I mean, one of the nicest nicest ideas I've ever seen, at least in my games. Yeah, so something like, I don't know, maybe something like, let's say, f5 and queen e8. <laughs> such, a, such a picturesque idea to trade the queens. Bishop e2, h5, e8, yeah, probably is nothing, nothing wrong. You mean here? Here, here, here. Yep, yeah, it also works. It works, it works. Sasha Duff. Completely fine. Completely fine. I mean, there's more than one win. Uh, attraction, then distraction. Yeah. My favorite game? I, uh, I think I, I did a Latin masterclass about my best games. So at some point I will do them do them in English. I think so. Uh, typically I try not to um, try not to do the same. What I've done in Latvian I try not to do in English. What I've done in English I try not to do in Latvian because also Latvians are watching it, and uh, I don't want them to watch the same stuff again. Uh, this was an exception. I mean, I did already the co-collation masterclass for Latvian language this Monday. Thank you. Thank you. It's not bad. And uh, somebody specifically asked me in the chat why I'm not doing this also for the English audience. And I said, okay, okay. I mean, this is great, great topic. So I want to do this. But I think I'm going to run out of the topics at some time anyway. So I will do the best games I've played in, in, the, uh, in the English language as well. So... Uh, so the boot camps is gonna remain, it's gonna stay there. Um, definitely, I'm gonna do it forever as, as long as I can do it. So I just I just find it fun. Let me check if there is anything else. Anything else interesting? There's some combinations. Kasparov Topalov. Ah, wait, you mean that, yeah, remember, there was this queenside attack, right, Sasha Duff? This rook d4, was it? Rook d4 sacrifice? Is this the game you're telling about? This was a game, yeah, yeah rook d4, yeah, thought so. I forgot most of the game, but I remember the idea. Yeah, that was lovely game. Uh, this was Petrov. Yeah, I think it was Petrov defense. Yeah, Petrov defense, the boring, boring Petrov. You can get such an exciting game. <laughs> yeah, it really depends, right? All righty. Um, let me check. I mean, mostly I wanted to do not the puzzles, but but uh, some uh, calculation techniques. But I guess it goes together. 
Game 6 of 1960. <laughs> um, game 6. That's Tal Batvinnik, right? So, Game 6, Tal was playing black. What was the game? I don't remember. Was it the King's Indian the Knight's Sacrifice on a 4? I don't think it was Game 6, though. I think it was Game... Game 12 something. Yeah? You think it was... Was it? The King's Indian? I don't remember, to be honest, the, the number. I remember the first game very clearly. I remember how Tal lost the 9th on 10 game. Uh, slightly. I mean, he was winning at some point. Night suck. Yeah, night suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's classic. That's classic, of course. I uh, I did already a masterclass about uh, Tal's best games in Latvian language. In Tal's birthday, which was... Uh, which was it? 8th November. 9th November. I always keep mixing it up. <laughs> so I did it. Did it. Already the Monday when he had it, but I'm gonna do it in English as well. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm not sure it was game six. Yeah, yeah, but night suck, night suck. Yeah, that was that was, and it's a legendary game, one of the best I'll ever ever played. But if you want to, if you want to have, uh, want to follow some great games, I think, I think I still have the command there. I wrote for chess.com a lesson course about Latvian School of Chess and there's Michael Tal's best games, three best games. So it's a video course, hope you're gonna like it if you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> the Latvian version. The Latin version is in my YouTube channel, I think that link is here. Maybe it's still also at my... Uh, Twitch archive, you can check it. The video is remain there for 60 days. Yeah, right now I use YouTube as a basement where to throw stuff, but yeah, it's it's going to change at some time. Yeah, and the Latin version was in the master classes for the Latin language. If you're gonna find it, I mean, you can watch it, of course. It's okay. Right. Um, let me check something perhaps interesting. Um, no, I think those were the best examples. So, I don't know. Let me check if there's something I missed. Yeah, ah, by the way, by the way, I remember. Now I'm, now I'm going to talk about competitive players. So it's not really, um, not really for, uh, for people who just like to play chess, but uh, now I'm talking about people who have... Uh, specialized chess programs at home, for example, like chess base or other programs. And one of the great strategies how you can train your calculation and your visualization is always write down your games in your computer by memory. For example, um, let's say I'm playing in, in a blitz event or rapid event. Yeah, rapid is easier. Let's say I'm playing the rapid tournament, one or two days, I come home. So the next thing I do, I open the laptop, I open chess base, I open my database with all of my games, and I write down the games by memory. And this is really, really great, great way to train uh, your memory. Yeah, because... I mean, slightly, slightly different topic, but uh, for for memorization, it it really, really helps. And uh, lately, I've been suffering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it could be quite difficult. But by the way, Sasha, did you know in Lithuania they are playing right now Lithuanian championships, right now, <laughs> on the board, live. One of the rare tournaments, actually, I think, which is going live. Uh, most of the games, McClamb, I can remember in full. Blitz games can be difficult, especially when you play it in Time Trouble, Time uh, Scramble. It can be difficult to remember all of the nuances, what exactly was where, but the opening phase, definitely. A rapid game, I remember every single move, mostly. 
Oh, unless, of course, I was just blitzing it out and I was in panic mode so long on time, then I don't remember this. Simple reason. You're thinking not enough for the particular move. <laughs> ah, pretty sure you would remember more than that. For example, Birdsmith. We would play a game right now. Let's say a blitz game. Are you sure you would absolutely rem uh, forget it after two days? You don't. You wouldn't remember at all what happened. Uh, depends on the moves or number of the moves. Yeah, okay, if it's 100 moves, it can be difficult to remember it. But uh, most of the games finish something like move 40, 50. They're, they're finished. So it's not really that difficult. So it's a nice training. How much? Yeah. Are you doing the same, Sashadov, by the way? I just, I just found it to be a great example. A great exercise. To always do it. But oh, you're good ones. Yeah. I see it's not mine. Yeah. You know, actually, one reason why it's uh, why it, it's a good idea to write down the games you have played is I think it's sort of like a little crime to forget a well played game. It's like a masterpiece. Yeah. You you've created a great masterpiece, a legendary game. Uh, you don't write it down. It's it's lost. Everybody everybody is going to forget it, including most importantly yourself. Yeah. Or more not to be lazy. Oh, you have good memory. I have average memory, for example, but uh, still trying to do this. All right, guys. Uh, do you want to play some Blitz? I mean, maybe we can play some sparring Blitz. Have some fun before I finish. Because I think I told you everything I wanted. Ah, by the way. By the way. Um... There's there's a one very nice video I wanted to uh, suggest to you to have a look at if you have the spare time. Let me please switch over to the YouTube. Um, I think it was Casper of Carp of 1990. Um. Okay, you can see it in just a second. Uh, this is a really great commentary. Uh, one of my favorite examples I'm using when I'm teaching my students about the co-collation techniques. And uh, there is a more than two hours uh, documentary of uh, Gary Kasparov uh, playing the World Championship match against Anatoly Karpov <clears throat> in 1990. And what I really enjoy is how both players explain their thought process. And in particular, how Kasparov explains his calculation. There is this one very, very nice moment when he was uh, playing this immortal game. Maybe Sashda will remember it just a second. I'll try to find it. I think it's this game. So probably you have seen the game. Uh, it's one of the most most amazing games Kasparov uh, played in his World Championship matches against Anatoly Karpov. Yeah, the link, the link, I think it's here. Just a second. Oh, you know the game and the video. Yeah, sure. I mean, you should know. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is gold, absolute gold. Yeah, Zaitsev Rai Lopez. Yeah, that's a Ray Lopez. By the way, why I wanted to mention this example is that Kasparov really, in a very nice way, explains his thought process and how he is he calculating. And I, in particular, I love this uh, one quote. He said, um, "This I calculated, and uh, this I calculated on the way, and I was basing my calculation partly on intuition because it was so complex, and the game proved I was right." And then in the end he says, I did not find the best defense. I mean, not the best, but if there is any uh, acceptable defense for black, if you did, well, well, then you did, because I did not. I thought I'm winning. And then I switch on the engine, engine say, Kasparov is winning. <laughs> I mean, really, really a great calculation by Kasparov. So definitely you can, uh, you can check that. Uh, Bobby, of Bobby Fischer? Slamming the pieces, yeah. I don't think I've seen it. 
Right. Okay, guys. Yeah, okay, I see that. Maybe maybe we can play some games. Do you want to play some games? I could play some games with the subs. Maybe somebody wants to play. I've talked for theoretical stuff for two and a half hours already. Head is gonna explode. <laughs> so I could do something else instead. A magazine from the 90s. I see that. Yeah, I guess everybody wants to listen to the theoretical stuff, right? I don't know. Maybe I should then finish then. Just a second. I'm going to switch back. Oh, Birdsmith wants to play. Yeah, maybe just let's just play a couple of games. And... Just call it quits. What do you think? I think it's here. Just a second, I'll switch to a different screen. Oh, where is the where is the da, 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 where's the board? Where's my board? Here it is. Oh. Just a second. Yeah, so one of the perks uh, for the subs, of course, the supporters as well, is I offer them to play some games during the live streams. Magnus versus Nepo. Nah, it's gonna take forever. Uh, there was Birdsmith, Root. Okay, I think Birdsmith was first. Okay, here we go. Birdsmith, you're on. If he's still here, he is still here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, but playing for three minutes without increment is just for fun. Don't take it too seriously. If you want to get better at calculation, uh, tactics, I suggest for you not to spend too much time on the puzzle rushes, which is solving puzzles in the limited time, something like three minutes or five minutes. It's just for fun. Now let's say Bifa, please don't blunder bishop c5. Okay. A3, not so sure. Oh, Birdsman, come on, come on, come on. Don't blunder the queen, don't blunder the queen. <laughs> Survival as warm-up. <laughs> okay, let's play rematch. Survival as, as warm-up, that's strange because for me, survival is already real stuff. The real stuff. I think I actually have an active session. I could check it briefly. Maybe it's going to be expired already. I have a previous active session that's puzzle survival. I think it, the score is something like 70 with one mistake. But I have no time... No time to continue, because it's so exhausting. Yeah, I do coaching, just guy. Yeah, but uh, I prefer really, um, really prefer uh, survival over the casual puzzles. And uh, I use the three minute a puzzle rush as a warm-up and typically I'm I'm doing the puzzles in Wednesdays typically sometimes when I have a very um, uh, tense graphic then I mean the graphic but schedule then I'm um, mixing it up somehow Okay, Shakar. Okay, don't be a stranger. Come around. Yeah, this is unfortunately a blunder. I mean, you are missing a pawn on e6. Checkmating over survive. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so bishop f6 loses a piece. So the only move is g takes to stay alive. Yeah, this loses.
Okay, I'm sorry, Birdsmith. I mean, my purpose is, of course, not to crush you. At least you play the GM. <laughs> uh, Anirut is still there. Okay, let's play one game, maybe. Okay, Kane, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for being here, Kane. Yeah, I'm probably gonna finish quite quite soon already. <clears throat> okay, welcome. You're welcome. Hello, Nikola Tesla. How are you doing? The Petrov. Yeah, it is Petrov, but with the weird 9d5. Nobody really plays like that. But I guess it is playable. I'm doing great. Oh, I see your challenge, Washwell Prism. Please wait for it. I'm gonna accept it. The next game should be should be still there. I think there is some possibility to play peace odds. I still haven't figured it out. Where is it really? Or maybe it's in the beta version? I don't know. Hey Tura Laser, Tura Laser. Did you watch the bootcamp? The theoretical part is already over. So we are just having fun, fooling around with some blitz. Uh, admins? Admins for what, Snot Boy? To play uh, P-Sods? Maybe it was in the beta version. Yeah, yeah, Dodds games. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was in the beta version. I, I know it. It's there. I just... I couldn't find it. So it could be a possibility, for example, to play against uh, channel followers by giving uh, them odds, something like an extra piece or extra rook or something, and try to make it more challenging. Chat moderators. Ah. I think I have some chat moderators. They're just not here. Maybe I should post an announcement. I'm looking for help. I mean, sometimes a spammer comes by. Today was one, so I just banned him. <laughs> so it's uh, two clicks and he's gone. Okay, let's just finish the development. Yeah, Togger, this is, this is what I, I was thinking actually about to post uh, in my in my club in the official club that I'm seeking some help but uh, I don't know I mean I think I still can manage the chat I try to answer to everybody if I did not answer to somebody probably there was uh, too much going on Now, after Long Castle, ah, it's too bad. I was so hoping to show you something. Anirut could have played Long Castle followed by Knight d7. And then I could play Queen c6, b takes, Bishop a6, mate. <laughs> ah, too bad he didn't fall for it, but okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, Sasha, the Long Castle had to be played. I was hoping for this mate, but ah. Okay, I'll just take the pawn, I guess. Uh, bishop g7 is funny, it doesn't work. I just take it. There's a second pawn at some point later. <laughs> yeah. 95. Oh, wait a second, I just take it. There's no bishop d5. Bishop b5 is not a mate. King of fate escapes. So I'll just take the pawn. I'm a big fan of extra pawns. Should I check the game? Sasha Duff, I'll check it briefly. The GM's game is the sharpest. Uh, from the modern players? Okay, I need a, okay, one more. Yeah, we can play one more. From the modern players or in the history? 
There are sharp players and then there are crazy players. Crazy sharp players. Because I think um, a competitive player needs to needs to be uh, excelling at both. The final position, yeah, I'll check it, I'll check it, I'll check it, Sashadov. Okay, okay, you got it, you got it, I'll check it. Now here's actually, this is d5, I think that's a slight mistake. Queen h5 check, g6, queen d5. Queen d5, knight of 6. Now this is funny. <laughs> if Anur is following the stream, yeah, <laughs> he's following the stream. I shouldn't have said that. Okay. <laughs> Dubov Sharpness, yeah, he's one of the modern modern hooligans, so to speak. Yeah, watchful prison. That's a nice strategy. I like that. <laughs> Many people play like that. And actually it's um, a very viable strategy when playing against a strong opponent because you're not risking anything anyway in a positional game uh there's a yeah i see your challenge just to, yeah i should have i'll finish this game and i'll accept your challenge queen d2 uh, what's happening here i don't know Knight? I don't know what to do here. Dub of Swan? Yeah, yeah, I, I know the game, of course. No, you know what is a more immortal game? Is my absolute favorite from modern chess is this game. Um, two Chinese players were playing Ding Ren against. Uh, who was the other player? Do you know? Do you remember? Ding Loren against uh, Yu Yangui? No, I mean, I don't remember. No, 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 not Wang Hao. There was a, a younger player. I, I know the player. Um, I forgot the name. Yeah, Bai Yinji. Yeah, Bai Yinji, exactly. Yeah, Bai Yinji. <laughs> Jeffrey Xiong is American. Bai Yinji. Uh, I could show it to you, but maybe another time. Uh, some uh, topic about... No, no, no. By Yinchi. By Yinchi. Uh, he is not really... Um, the top level GM, he's just a GM, but still very good, very good player. And uh, he played the legendary game. Uh, maybe I'll very short, I'll just, before I'm finishing, I'll, I'll show you the game, I'll check what Sashadov sent me there. Ah, listen, I promised to play against Watchful Prism as well. Yeah, yeah, by Yinji. Oh! Yeah, Agad Matar's channel is great, right? Yeah, he's he's really doing fantastic stuff. I'm gonna win this actually. It's not clear. I can take the pawn here, but takes takes knight e6 in the end. I mean this knight obviously on e6. Okay, I'll just simplify slightly. Maybe I get a better endgame. Maybe a 5b6 was better, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, we can play, we can play. But just one game. Queen blunder. Okay, I think I should be better. Really? He said that? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, that was insane game. No, but listen, I think I'm going to show you that game in another bootcamp because it was so beautiful, so insane that it deserves extra extra time instead of very quickly rushing forward. Yeah, sure, he was nervous because that was his immortal game right there. Oh, actually, I'm down on 30 seconds. I didn't even notice that. <clears throat> okay. Right, right. Watch out, Prism. Are you still there? We can play one game. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great topic. 20th century immortals. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely, I love that. There was this uh, great article um, at chess.com. Uh, the best games of 2010s. Something like the last, the best games of the last decade. I think I have it somewhere. I mean, I was just looking at the games and drooling. I mean, it's so great, so great. Yeah. Okay, chess guy, you're welcome. Ah, oh, that was you. That was you. Okay. Because I don't know everybody uh, of their chess.com nickname. Hey, Olims. Greetings from Latvia. Uruguay. Wow. How is Uruguay doing, by the way? How is the weather? How is the sun? <laughs> Morozovic MVL. Uh, yeah, I don't remember, to be honest. Quite warm, okay. Can I play an IG5? I don't know, really. I just sort of improvised. Maybe it's not a big deal. Knight A5. Hmm. This actually looks like awfully like a theory, no? Takes, takes. I think I've seen it somewhere. Um. Ah, what? Uh, on your profile advert for your courses. I think you need to change the. You need to change the background color. So maybe you have the dark background. You can choose it to light. It's uh, here. It's here. Uh, somewhere here. Where was it? Yeah, dark mode here. Try to switch off. What? Try to switch off the dark mode. Oh, I set the color. So you cannot read it. I'll check it. I'll check it. Thank you. Thank you for notifying me. Yes. It's so dark. Uh, yeah, you can try to highlight, of course, but that's not my purpose. Can I do something funny here? Can I do something? I don't know, G4. Can I do this to stop a fight from happening? He's right. I'll check it. Something like Queen G4. Highlighting, yeah, that's not supposed to be. But thank you for notifying. I didn't know this problem to be existing. Can I play Bishop H6? Take, take, take. Yeah, probably I can. Probably I can. Bishop C8, that's a good move. Okay, let's target the queen with the tempo. Rook G5, Queen G5, or even Queen C8 is possible. 
should be winning. Oh, listen, I have one minute and seven seconds. I should be playing slightly faster than this. Rook G1 and some, some ideas here. So my background color is it, right? Yeah, I'll investigate this. For blitz game, yeah, yeah, but again, uh, what is important is the time. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think you want to trade because I'm happy to simplify the position. Um, tick, 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 here, 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 should be good. Ah, rook of eight, I missed rook of eight, I thought rook e8 d6, yeah, this I missed. But I guess I still should be doing great. Okay, it's not boy. Take care. Have a great day. Bye bye. Should be winning. I have two pawns. Okay, let's keep this pawn. Uh, maybe some sacrifices. No, I don't think it's anything. Let's not blunder anything. That's, uh, yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Watch for present for the game. I mean, we definitely can play another time more. Uh, where is this uh, a game, Sashadov? Where is this game? You told me a chess bomb. Ah, oh, there it is. Found it. Ah! <laughs> yeah. That was... Ah, um... oh, you're not seeing this. Just a second. Just a second. You're not seeing this. Here. Rook C6. Uh... Hey, yeah. Watchful prison. <laughs> you're welcome. We can play a lot more in the future streams as well. I always try to play against my channel subs. So, I'm, I mean, technically you're not a sub, but you're a very big supporter. Oh, wait, so, oh, you are a sub. Yeah, you also are a sub. But I mean, I, I always play with people who support my channel. So you definitely are one of them. Good night to the Indians. Yeah. Good night, good night. Uh... Ah, from move 12. <laughs> I see that. Yeah, that's lovely. Okay, chess guy, have a great evening. All right, I see. That's a nice game. That's nice. Alrighty, alrighty. So, let me uh, switch back here. So, I think, I think I'm, um, I'm uh, finishing probably. It was super, super fun and super great to talk with you guys. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, huge uh, thanks to Watch for Prism for the big support. Really, really, you're fantastic. Thank you. And uh, to, thanks to everyone who was um, following the bootcamp. The fact that you're watching, the fact that you appreciate it, it's so important for me. And it makes me also more motivated to produce more stuff, right? And uh, thank you, thank you for being here. So my next stream, I still don't know it yet, because it's going to be one in the weekend. Um... I was supposed to play a streamer battle league match against the Chess Dojo channel. I don't know if they're gonna play this weekend, so they haven't answered yet. I don't know what's happening. If it's not gonna happen, I will have a Chess Club's fifth arena. So again, if there is one of the subs who is not in my official club, of course, you're very much welcome to join my club 
So this is the official place where I'm um, um, talking with the people um, who like the stuff, what I'm producing. And I'm reading the club on a daily basis, writing some news. So this I would like, I would like to keep as a place uh, to communicate to communicate with you guys when we are um, when I'm off stream. Share some ideas. I mean, it's slowly growing. I established it only this July, and I expect to be quite quite large in the end. And one of the things I'm doing for the club is organizing the various events. So at least I would like to keep this tradition. Um, to organize various arenas and tournaments so that you always have something to play and you always have something to watch. And again, thank you for being here. Have a great evening or what time zone you have anyway. <laughs> for me, it's evening, late, late evening already, so I have to finish. Take care, have a great day and see you on the future streams. Bye-bye.